Today I'm going to be assembling and adjusting this count wheel based older cuckoo clock. There's the count wheel in this. One of the first things I did was uh, this minute post where the, the minute and the hour tubes fit onto. Um, that actually, that post actually unscrews. And that's important because just the way this clock turned out, um, I need to put I need to put this lift lever in first. It looks like it's designed so that I don't have to do that, but uh, I need to because uh, all the cuckoo levers get in the way of each other. So first thing I'm going to do is turn this lever around. It's going to be raised by the minute posts to make the strike work. And then I'm going to put this on a little stand here because of the long arbor of the uh, time great wheel. The strike great wheel goes in here. upside down relative to the time great wheel. Time second wheel. Time escapement. The escape wheel, rather. Okay. Um... <laughs> cam that runs the lock lever here. Put that in next. Come on. There it goes. There. And this lever just rides on it, just rides behind it. Then we've got the warning, warning wheel with the warning pin. Oops. And the fan would go next, but I'm not going to put that in, and I'll explain that a little later when it makes sense. Um, then I've also got this lever, the drop lever as I said, or the, uh, yeah, uh, that has a little pin that it sits on like that. And that drops right into the cam there. Oops. There. Oh, and this lever has a helper spring. Then we've got the cuckoo levers. And it's funny, uh, this clock seems to be designed so you can drop the cuckoo levers in after everything's been assembled, but uh, like most other cuckoo clocks. But uh, for some reason, these levers get in the way of that. And so I have to kind of do this backwards and put these levers in before I put the plates together. Notice that the spring for the cuckoo, or for the gong, goes right there. And then I've got two cuckoo levers, a long one and a short one. And the long one goes in on the bottom, the short one goes in the middle. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm going to turn those bolts around, turn all of these around, and that's going to drop in. Have I got everything? Yes, I've got everything all set. Now, what comes next is the tedious part that you don't usually see because it's a total pain. And that is the part of getting all these pieces into their proper holes and getting the plates together. So, usually you can work from the bottom up, that is from the great wheels up. And Oh, come on. There we go. I replaced the nuts on this, unfortunately, because the original nuts were stripped. Probably from some crash or something. I don't know. Okay, now it's time to put the magnifiers on and pull out my uh, pivot locator for moving the pivots around and let's see where we are okay One of the things that complicates matters is that some clock repairer in the past um, did some prick punching to uh, try to fix some problems. Uh, this is, there we go. Yeah, okay, so the time side is moving around well. That's the easy one. All these levers, ugh, that keeps dropping out. And getting jammed. What's going on there? Ah, there we go. Tell you what, let me take the, loose the spring there for that so that doesn't keep trying to turn.
Okay, things are starting to mesh. I think the great wheel hasn't yet. Oh. in at least. Uh, huh. Okay, that's... Ah, great. I think I've got it. That's a shock to have it so soon. I've put this movement together a few times just for practice, and to practice the adjustments. But still, it's a surprise for it to come together so quickly. Okay. So, the time slide spins. And the strike side goes through all of its stuff. And uh, surprisingly, nope, okay. I thought I had really lucked out and uh, had the uh, warning pin in the right place, but that's not quite true. So here's the deal. Um, I don't know if you can see in there how the warning pin which is right there. That runs up against the uh, this this uh, lock lever here, right here, like that, and it stops the strike movement from moving. And then when the lift lever lifts, see the lift lever is on the other side. And it gets lifted by the minute hand, or the minute post. When that lifts up, it lifts the lock lever here, this guy. And so the strike can run. And then when this count lever, which is going to be dropping into the count wheel, when this count lever drops, the lever drops, and the warning pin hits up against that. But I think the warning pin's a little far from where it ought to be. That the, this lever has already started to rise a little bit from this cam that's underneath it. So what I'm going to do is uh, move the warning pin. And to do that, I'm going to undo this. And this is why... I left off the fan because when we adjust the warning wheel, well, the fan's going to fall out anyway. And it just gets in the way. We can put it in once we get everything done. So what I've found out through experimentation on this clock is that to set the warning wheel, what I can do is I can turn the, the strike in the right direction strike great wheel in the right direction until the strike locks and then I can back up until this cam jams up against the uh, lock lever and keeps it in place then keeping pressure on that wheel so that that oops there it moved so that that doesn't move I gotta do it again here okay Let's go through the whole thing. There, it's locked. Now I'm going to move it backward a bit till it jam till the cam jams up against this lever. And while I'm holding that so it doesn't get loose and I don't touch the lever, why I can separate these plates enough to pull out the um, warning wheel. Come on. I need to loosen this a little more. Nope. There. 
Okay, so you see it's it's unmeshed now from the uh, second wheel. Got to move the warning wheel back into place. Mesh it back. Well, maybe the way to do that is to put the bottom end in first, like I did originally. Uh, there's the... Uh, I see the trouble. Yeah. I have to put the top in first now. Okay. So that's in. And now I can separate the plates a little bit. So that I can get this wheel in. Okay, it's almost where it belongs. There's a lot of pressure on the pivot right now, which isn't good. With the uh, fancier clocks, that pivot is thinner and really hard to um, move around without bending it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, the problem I'm running into now is that the lantern, this part right here, um, is running into the gears. There, it's starting to mesh. Good, good. Come on. There. Ah, there we go. Okay. Something else I noticed is this, this helper spring here. It's on the wrong side of the... No, it isn't. I'm sorry. It needs to be on this side of the lock lever so that it helps push the lock lever down. Okay, now, it turns out in doing all that, <laughs> I, I fixed the lock a bit. Yeah. So, let's do this again. I've got the... Uh, the lever drops. Okay. And then when the lever drops, I'm going to back up the strike, I mean, sorry, the great wheel, until the cam jams against the lever to hold it securely. And then while I'm keeping that pressure on, I'm going to separate the pins here, separate the plates rather, and pull that out. And then move the pin over to where I think it belongs and then put the wheel back in. Huh. Uh, 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 it's moving. I don't want that. I found a lot of the adjustment of the warning pins on clocks is sometimes just a matter of Trial and error. Okay, this is out of the way now. Yeah. Just blocking the plates a little. Oh, oh gee, it just spun so the warning wheel's in kind of a random position now. There, got it back. Move the warning wheel back to where I think it belongs. It's over here, more or less. And then, get 
to mesh it into place. There, there we go. I had to pull the second wheel down a bit so that it would stop jamming against the lantern here. Okay, so now we can try the lock again. Oh yeah. Oops. Okay, let's close these up a little. Let's test where the warning pin wound up. So when it locks, if I back up, why the warning pin shows up over here, which I think is too far. I think it ought to be up. Oops, sorry. Warning pin's about here. I want it to be about here, so I have to take it apart again. So keeping it locked, keeping it jammed, I should say. Oops. There, it's locked. Now I pull backward and it's jammed. Now I separate the plates. The wheel's out. I can adjust its position. And then I can push it back in. And I really ought to be using the pivot locator to do this so that I don't bend the pivot. Come on. There we go. Nope, I slipped it again. Ah. Oh. Okay, there's the lock. Oops, sorry. There's the jam. And so now let's move the wheel. Okay. There. Now there. Now the, the wheels are meshed. And I can see it locks. And then when I pull it backward, why? Where is the. Yeah. The warning pin is where I like it for this clock, which is about, I don't know if you can see about there. So let's see how it locks once I get everything back together here. Make sure everything's in place. That lever is not in place. Hmm. Oh, yeah, there we go. Sometimes on this clock, the, the levers, uh, I mean, the little, the little levers that, that move on these pins of the uh, great wheel, strike great wheel, those levers jam together, making it not fit all together. So now I think I have it. Let's see how the lock behaves. Okay. Oh, that's nice. So I'm speeding along and it locks unless I'm really everything. See, I can really... There. Oh yeah, that's a good solid lock. There. So, I've got the lock in place. Now, Oh yeah, now I should put in the fan, which I can hopefully put in without disturbing that position of the wheels there, because the fan's shorter. <laughs> okay. Oh, one thing I should have pointed out is I was pulling out the bottom pivot of the uh, warning wheel to get it in place, and that's because that's where the uh, gears mesh. And now, when it's right, more or less right side up, I can put the fan in, and it goes with its lantern up here to mesh with the warning wheel. Man, that's a long pivot, huh? Uh, maybe I can do it this way. Oh, again, I should be using the 
pivot locator to move this thing around. There we go. And I think I didn't disturb the position of the warning pin. Where is it? Yeah, it's still in about the 11 o'clock position. I found on this clock like 11 to 1230 is a good spot when the when the strike wheel is driven backward to jam the cam against the lever there. And that's because the lever actually drops a little bit after it moves a little further down after it drops off the cam. So I'm moving slowly. You can see the edge of the cam come up maybe. And there's the drop. And then it actually moved a little further down before it hit the law, hit the, uh, before the warning pin hit it. And now I can look and see the warning pin is right in the middle of the face of the drop lever, which is really good. Okay, so I've got my lock straightened out. So yeah, let's recap. I've, I've got the, the wheels assembled, first of all wheels and levers here. All the other stuff I'm going to put in later, which is kind of a nice luxury. Okay, and now we can see, let me move these levers so they don't get jammed up. There we go. There. Yeah, so the, again the, the, well I'll show that later, how that, how that uh, thing goes off. Okay, so now there's one more Thing to adjust on this movement and that is where okay we have gong gong ku ku is the the order that things happen in the gong happens first this long ku ku lever goes in second and then the third thing that drops is this middle ku ku lever and we want to make sure that when the movement goes into lock why it isn't pushing first of all when we lock this lever is dropped, so the next thing that's going to happen when it comes out of lock is it's going to say gong instead of some weird other order. So if we got that wrong, why what would happen is it might, when it strikes, it might go ku gong ku, ku gong ku, ku gong ku, and stop. And that would be really wacky. So I get to move the wheel so that when it, just when it drops that last thing, that's where I want the strike, uh, that's where I want the uh, mechanism to lock at. But right now, it moves a little further before it locks. And the problem with that is that it has pushed on the lock, uh, I'm sorry, it's pushed on the cuckoo lever here. And the problem with that is that that puts pressure on the strike train. So that when the strike train starts, it has to work against the pressure of that cuckoo lever and its spring to get going and that uh, can make the clock stop the striking stop uh, so we want to gong coo gong coo coo we want to stop it right there so I need to turn the great uh, the strike great wheel without turning the other parts of the thing so again, I'm going to put the, put the uh, train in lock, and then I'm going to pop out the uh, great wheel, and there's a trick to that. Okay, first of all, let me get it into lock again. Okay, it's in lock, and then I'm going to put my finger right there to hold, ugh, yeah, to hold the wheel there. And then I'm going to pull these plates apart, but I don't have to pull them apart very far to let the um, great wheel get out of its, there, did you hear it click? The great wheel got out of its hole there a little bit, and now I can turn it without moving anything else. So, oh, I'm going to turn it to about there and then put it back. 
We'll see how that goes. Okay. So, let's try again here. Oops. Yeah. Oh. Gong coup. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now let me put the spring in for the gong. And you can see, I mean, ideally, there shouldn't be any contact between a strike pin, which is one of these guys along here, and the gong lever, the gong pin, when, when the uh, system, the, the chain, the train locks. But for this particular clock, the wires are kind of bent and I'm not quite sure why, so I'm leaving them alone. And that means that there is just a little pressure when the thing stops. So there's the drop, there's the second drop, and then it locks as soon as it can after that. But it's putting just a little, you can see the gong move here, it's putting just a little pressure on the gong. I apologize, my camera keeps shutting off. So, now, can I put this in here? Yeah, I can put this in here. This is where you'd like to have something that just supports the pillars. So you can work on this without any problems. Okay, so next thing I put in is the minute tube. Usually on uh, more modern clocks, it's just a shaft. But notice it has these two, or notice it has these two um, little points on it. Those are the lift pins. Those are the things that are going to lift that. You see it going? I don't know if you can see that. It's not very bright. You can see it being lifted up by those pins. Okay. That should happen every half hour. And then we've got the hour cannon on there. Oops, don't want to put that on yet because I have other stuff to put on. The um, motion works gear. And that has a spring underneath it. And that acts as a clutch to let you adjust the, let you turn the minute hand without um, having to drive the whole clock. If you didn't have that clutch, you couldn't turn the minute hand to adjust the time. Okay, now, got this washer. <clears throat> Now for a bit of a messy part. This tapered pin goes through a hole in the shaft of the um, great wheel, strike great wheel. And because the tension washer, that's a little bit sort of below level. So I need to push down on both sides of this gear uh, to let the pin go through. <clears throat> then I can push that through and cut it off. Well, I won't do that just yet because uh, I may need to disassemble all this and I don't want to have to recut the lever, <laughs> the pin. Okay, so that's one of the four uh, pins that this Whole thing works on. You can see there how I can twist this around. I can keep the strike train. I'm sorry, the time train. I was when I said strike train, I meant time train for that. This is this is this gear is from the time train. It's driving the minute post. It also no, nope, never mind. That's it. That's all it does. Okay, so now I can put this guy in. Nope. See, I told you I might need to pull out that lever, that uh, tapered pin. I do need to, because I forgot that the hour gear has to mesh into this gear of the motion works. Then I can put the washer on. And that's going to make this even harder to get the pin in, because there's even more stuff there. Let's see. Okay. Oh. 
Okay, why is that easier? need to get the pin beyond the washer there so it'll stay in place. There we go. I pushed it down a little bit to get the clutch down a bit and that opened up the pin, the pinhole. Okay so now I have that, like I said now I've got that, that in. And you can see as I move this around why it, uh oh, why is that not? Oh, I'm going backwards. That's why it's having trouble. Yeah. Okay. And I haven't cut the, t the pin yet, so that's going to get in the way. But I don't care yet. Okay. Now, all that's in place and it isn't going anywhere. So that's good. <clears throat> now, next, let's do the... Oh, let's turn this around so I can see it. So I'm oriented. Next, let's put in the count wheel. Oh, mm, one thing I have to remember is to oil a little bit of this first. Okay, one thing I forgot is because this is a cuckoo clock, why, as I put all these parts on, they're going to obscure some oil points. So I actually need to take this apart that I just put together so that I can oil all the, woo, the washer came out, so that I can oil all the pivots before I start putting all this other junk on. As you can see here, this, this pivot in particular is blocked once I get this gear on. So, I've got some clock oil in here. Let's just oil the pivots. And I don't oil levers because they don't make full turns. I don't know why. That seems to be what people do. Um, and so, yeah, just pivots right now. Let's oil these up. And ideally, I mean, what we really should be doing is just a touch of oil in there. But this doesn't have an oil sink, which is kind of funny. Let's see, that one has an oil sink. I can put a little oil in there, a little oil in there. Uh -huh. Okay, that's all those. Okay, now, there's still a couple of things I need to oil. Um, let's see if I can remember. Uh, I don't think I oiled the cam, even though it does make circles. You know, I oiled the pivot for it, but I don't think I oiled the cam itself. Because you don't want to be oiling stuff that's just going to gum up. But I do need to put a little dot of oil on this lift lever where it's going to drag against the posts on the minute hand and I need to oil this shaft for the minute post I don't know, oiling is still a dark art to me, an unknown art. Okay. <clears throat> now I can go back to putting in the uh, MotionWorks wheel there. So on goes the clutch, on goes the wheel. Make sure the wheel meshes with the minute. Um, 
On goes the hour cannon tube and the washer. Now in goes the tapered pin. There we go. Okay, tapered pins in there nice and tight. Well, for now, tight enough for now. Okay. Now, okay. now let's do the count wheel. Oops, my upside down. Um, I'll turn around. Let's try this again. Count wheel, count wheel, count wheel. Yeah. There's the count lever. That's going to drop into the count wheel. Uh huh. And I'm going to need to oil the count wheel as well. Because it's going to be moving in a circle. So let me oil that first. And this wheel is kind of bent inward here. The center is in, so really only the outside turns. I mean, only the outside touches. And you know, now that I think about it, I don't think it touches at all, and I shouldn't be oiling this. Hmm. Because the screw stops the... No, it does. It does. It sits down. So I'm fine. Okay. I drop the screw in. And the screws on this clock are a little different. There are five screws. And there are two pair that look a lot, look very similar to each other they aren't. And the one odd screw is the count wheel screw. So that's easy to pick out. Did I get it in? Nope. Not quite. Okay. Ah. Not quite yet. Is uh, that right? Yeah, that's the right hole. Hmm. Okay, why isn't it threading? There we go. Got it. I can tighten that screw a little bit because it's got a spacer to keep the wheel loose. So the wheel needs to just move nicely like that. It's going to be meshed with a gear down here so I don't have to worry about uh, how loose or tight it is. I mean, loose would be better, so I should loosen this a little. There we go. Okay, next pin. There's this little tiny pin. I've cut it off because I needed to... Uh, sorry, let me get this back in. Okay. See the little pin, little gear there? That's the pin. That's the gear that drives the count wheel from the uh, strike great wheel. It's going to go in right there. And before I do that, I need to oil the shaft that it's going to, that this uh, gear is going to be on. There we go. Just a tiny bit of oil. 
now I can put the gear in. And now the weird part of this gear is that its hole lines up with the shaft, a hole in the shaft of the um, come on, strike gear. locked why I have access to that uh, so all I need to do <laughs> is line up this gear with that pinhole that's not right that looks right and then I can push this pin in. And I cut this pin off because it was just easier. Ah, uh, oh, oh dear. Maybe it wasn't easier. <laughs> these pins are tricky, these tapered pins. Okay, I have the wide end of the tapered pin in the needle nose pliers. Let me see if I can stuff that in. There we go. Okay. So that end at least. Oh. Something I remember I noticed about this wheel is that the two holes in it are tapered. So maybe, yeah, I ought to just get a new tapered pin and, and start over because it's just too hard to work with that small one. Okay, so I got some tapered pins here, tapered brass pins. I can pull one of those out and hopefully get it in here. Oops. There we go. Now you can see it peeking out just a little bit on that side. Let's try going the other way. Because I've noticed in a lot of these clocks the holes are tapered so the pin really has a particular way it should go in. Yeah, in fact, on this you can see that when I push it in, it really hasn't gone very far. Now, you know, maybe I'm just mistaken, but uh, it sure seems like these pinholes are designed for the pin to go in a particular way. I'm probably mistaken. I'm probably making that up. Okay, so the pin's through. So now I can cut it off. <clears throat> okay, and I want to do this so that I don't drop the bit of the uh, tapered pin into the clock. That'd be messy. Now I can push that pin in a little bit more. Without pushing too hard. And I want to make sure that there's clearance so the pin doesn't jam up against the uh, count wheel there. Oh yeah, tons of clearance. Good. Okay. So that, oh, 
<laughs> now you can see the count wheel working. So see, it's just moving along here. This drop lever up here hasn't dropped yet because it hasn't found a hole to drop into. And there's the half hour. And there's one, two, three, four, five. Ten, eleven, twelve, and it locks. And then twelve thirty, and then one, and then one thirty, and two o'clock. Great! So the count wheel seems to be in the right position, uh, which I think is guaranteed by the way these things mesh. But the good news is that the lever here is not bent, so it is falling in the right place. Okay, now the escapement is a good thing to put in next. The crutch, the anchor. And let's see, it's going to stick out this side like that. Let me get the last two tapered pins and last screws. and I'm trying to keep my left hand out of the camera so it's a little tricky. Okay, now I've trimmed these tapered pins but not, uh, not a lot. I haven't done the final tapering. I just wanted them to not get into the works when I was doing some testing. So I jam that, or I press that tapered pin in there and now I'm going to press it in tighter and then cut the ends off. I can leave that side of the pin in because nothing in the works is near it. So I am going to leave that in there. I don't like cutting a piece off that might fall into the works. And then this end I'm just going to cut off for looks. I'm going to put my hands over the... Oops! It's a little tall, isn't it? Uh -uh. Uh, it's a little short. There we go. I'm going to put my hands over this to capture the end, which I did. Great. Okay. Now let me double check that I really am not going to have anything in the way here. Ah, come on. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, got one side in. No, I don't. Oh dear. Oh. Did I do this wrong? I thought I could get away with putting one side in. Yes, I can. There we go. 
putting one side in and then putting the second side in later. So there's that. Now I'm going to put this back in here. Oh! <clears throat> okay. This is where I really do need something that's just the right size. So I'm going to have to hold this in my hand, which is a pain. <clears throat> Here's the second plate. And I can tell which is the tapered pinhole versus the um, no, I take that back. I was going to say I could tell which is which because one has, one hole has an uh, oil sink and the other one doesn't, but they both seem to have oil sinks. That's kind of spooky. Mm. It looks like the rounded end, yeah, the, the more rounded end, is the one that holds the thing. Hopefully, if this clock was designed well, why I can't put this in backwards. I'm looking at the piece to see any signs of wear or anything that would give me a hint. And I think it goes in this way. There it's lined up with the screw and the tapered pin. So I think that's right. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, come on. In with the screw. Okay, let's try to put it in backwards and see what happens. Turning it the other way around. Ah, it doesn't really fit the pinion very well. And... Yeah. The tapered pinhole lines up. But this... well... Okay, now I'm a bit puzzled because if you look really closely there, I don't know if you can see it at all, there's a pin prick. There's a prick punch next to the hole. And that tells me that somebody tried to tighten that in the past. So I'm going to use that as the pivot hole. Is that right? Yeah. Well, if the clock doesn't run, that's one thing I can try out. Let's try swapping that around. Okay. And now the tapered pin. Tighten the screw. Tighten the tapered pin. Here, that tapered pin is very close to the wheel, so I'm going to cut it. And I can't do this anymore, so I have to do this over this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, not really. Okay. Let's 
close, but not in the way. Hmm. Okay. I'll cut the other end. Here. I could take off a little more than that. I want to have enough tapered pin to be able to pull the pin out again. Man. Uh, uh, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to cut that. Can I do it this way? Yeah. It's going to fly. That is, the end is going to fly. Ah, good. I've got the end, so I know it isn't in the works, the movement. And I made a little more space there for, for that. Okay, now I need to oil the escapement. The escapement has two pivots, so I want to oil it at this one. Come on. There. And this one. And I want to oil the pallets where they touch the gears. Or maybe the teeth instead. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of the teeth. Okay, we're almost done. I have just a couple of things left to do here. And one is to put the perch on. Uh, so the perch is the thing the bird sits on. And, uh, well, there are two brackets for the, the perch. One has a big hole in it and one has a small hole in it. The small hole goes in here and the big hole goes all the way through here there I can put that on there and then there it goes on like that actually turns out I can Screw these things in first and then put the uh, perch in, <clears throat> which seems to me a little easier. Okay, a round part facing backward. Uh, won't tighten that yet. And round, part, round part facing backward. that in. Unscrew. Okay, now getting the perch in, I can just slip that in so. And it turns out the hole is just big enough that I can feed the perch this way. And the perch has to go underneath this little lever here. This lever is going to flip the perch outward so the bird comes out. And now that I have all that in place I can screw this in. <coughs> Tighten this down. And then I've got to put the spring in place so that 
the spring pulls the bird backward. But first I'm going to make sure that we're unlocked. Why is nothing moving? Uh -huh. So we're locked so that this lever is out as far as it's going to go. And you can see when that's set that way, the birds back a bit. And uh, I'm going to adjust, can you see, yeah, this, this wire down here, I can adjust to adjust how far back and how far forward the uh, bird goes when it cuckoos. <clears throat> but before all that, I need to get the spring in here. I'm just giving the spring one twist. Yeah. I'm trying my best not to bend the spring as I do this because I don't want to break the spring. So there we are. The spring is nicely placed over the top of the helper spring here, so it's not going anywhere. And you can see that movement. Okay, I'm not going to, uh, to adjust this lever right now. Um, that needs to happen pretty much in the cuckoo, but you can see here that when the bird's cuckooing, the perch is out. Yoo-hoo. And then when it finishes, the perch should pop back inward. Okay. There. Yeah, so it's clear it needs a little adjustment. But I'm, like I said, I'm not going to do that. That's kind of a touchy thing. Uh, okay, the last thing I need to do is put the feet on. This particular clock has these strange little screw-on feet with a, uh, a screw over there and these pointed uh, pillars so that what happens is when I've screwed in a foot, why that point protrudes a bit. And this lets you kind of wiggle the movement around, which is kind of funny. I've never seen that before. Put this one on. Okay, <clears throat> now the clock is all set to, or the movement is all set to put inside a clock. There we go.